Blessed love and peace. We back at it. What happened was, what had happened was, uh, we just come back from the spot. Let's see how dark it is. Um, indeed. And we done recorded a thing about the brethren. And we got a wee bit animated. Speaking experience of truth. Truth is 1% what is said and 99% how it's said. We get a little bit in the cussy cussy realm. A little bit in that uh, ignorance talk. In the ignorance speak. Um, and... Um, Comparatively mild, comparatively moderate, uh, no, no retraction, but there, there's further constructive rhetoric to be shared. Now, that being said, on our behalf, what we can share is that when people speak ignorance towards one's, towards one, one's and one's eyes and eyes, um, it's beneficial to be loving, patient, strong, um, resilient uh like a, a, a father a loving father honing in a a wayward son a prodigal son even uh, but occasionally yo that son can be a little bit strong and sometimes there is that necessity of responding to the ignorance with a wee bit of indignance uh, and it's not necessarily a matter of what the what words are being said but like feeling like yo no shut shut stop um, and speak that speak that lingo in some kind of way, so can folk can hear what we're saying beyond what we actually say. Now that being said, it's always beneficial to reason, to to talk, to 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 talk it out, understand optimally what's going on, uh, and what the challenges are, what the harms are, what the healing is. So we're gonna endeavor to do that right here. Uh, for the moment, now we consider, yo, it's still we in the, we, it's, it's 20 hours, this is the 20th hour, I guess actually the 21st hour, Viente Doce is the hour, um, so it's still early, we could go back to the spot to post this, perhaps upload it, but you know what, Sirius is past our curfew, so the consideration, speaking loud too actually, to be honest, kind of because it's comparatively quiet here, we, we talk about giving it quiet or whatever, now it's been quiet uh, since the crash up. Uh, generally speaking, and now we loud, so let's be mindful of this. Um, and also, yo, yo, we're, we're working to get back into our routine. So all that factors into what this is. Uh, so probably won't upload this, which means hold on to this for a week, God willing, most likely. We'll see. We'll see what happens afterwards. Um, all, all happens according to the grace, the divine grace of the Most High Elohim. So, now that being said, uh, again, brethren, brethren, Dr. Umar Johnson, and his African name escapes me at the moment, which is actually very telling on my part when I talk, when I talk about him learning African and me not speaking his African name. That's on me at that point. So, uh, I have to work on, on that discipline. But at the same time, not trying to learn further about brethren, Dr. Umar Johnson, uh, because of just what we observe and, and uh, the frustrations. And, and basically, it's the same scenario. We look up, we do a search for this mixed race because we're trying to find out what's going on as much as we can because we see the obstructions about when we when we do connect with brethren and sistren on the online or whatever, we do we see obstructions and like it'd be either can folks stop posting or fall off or like like we don't get updates or whatever else like that. And so ironically in social media, like once connecting with people and additionally like there's there's a, a methodology of keeping those that are most close to that we actually know at somewhat of a distance and just inundating popular popularized culture that is proximate with the content so that we get substitutes for the genuine loved ones in our lives uh, and distractions and further and further and that's what's pushed onto us uh, meanwhile it's difficult further difficult to actually connect, connect, and meaningfully connect, meaningfully connect, and like accessibly and regularly connect with kinfolk uh, through the things, the, the the communications, the media communications that are supposed to connect people, and instead it's just inundation of proximate sensationalization. Anyways, all right. So on this topic, 
just did another search, just looking for mixed heritage kinfolk. That's it. We're not trying to step on nobody's game or whatever. Just doing our lane. And here it is. The hatred. Just trying to look look to where we're at. And here's here's hatred. Now, when I say we, we're the earth. But particularly, and uh, there's this, there is a necessity of, um, of, foundation and definition as a people's and experience so um, it is an ongoing saga or it's an ongoing journey so anyways that's what that's what precipitates us because then when we see the responses when we see the search results again we see further presumably recent comments from brethren dr umar johnson again hating just category and, and like quadrupling quadrupling down on, on just like the throwing mixed people under the bus. Now, and he's talking about Obama and, and, and Kamala. He's the one who talks about politics. We, on, on this side, I can't speak for all mixed people because mixed people are involved, involved in the bullshit too. But on this side, we don't even talk, we don't even talk about politics. We don't even, we, and, and we don't give advice about who to elect for, what, it's no. We're not even citizens. So for him to like, all right, all right let's pause for a second and, and um, Put some things in perspective so that's what we're responding to and it gets it gets it gets frustrated because we don't see black voices balancing and we don't see mixed voices having strength to respond with credibility uh, and that's part of the challenge because uh, mixed folk are still just trying to be um, so uh, the consideration, the intention here is to share some of like the, to describe like some of the workings that are going on in this scenario. Um, and again, no notes, uh, don't even have like a, like a outline or whatever. There are some points that, that, are, that are considered. We'll see how it goes in terms of the, the delivery, the presentation. So um, first, it's appropriate for me to, to articulate and to, to provide the disclaimer that I know comparatively modest amount of brother Dr. Umar Johnson. I saw his videos first probably about five, six years ago maybe. Uh, actually, yeah, about five, six years ago. I think right as he was, uh, before he made the purchase, he was just talking about the school. He was talking about different sites. We, he was talking about a, a previous military academy or something like down south. Uh, but then eventually, and so that was, again, if the school was purchased five years ago, according to a recent video that he just uh, records, presumably, again, we, we have uncertainty about anything being actual, uh, or a lot of things being actual. How much of it's fabricated, how much of it is just completely AI, how much of it is, like, manipulated. Um, we, we see clips here and there. We don't know what the date is on the clips. You can t discern through topical references of, of, um, of current events. And additionally, but even then, like, there's so much fabrication and, and, and uh, dishonesty, whatever. So we, we can't even say that there even, is, there even is a brother, Dr. Umar Johnson. To be honest, that's how things are. So at the very least, we have to, like, put that pause on P-A-U-S-E in terms of making conclusions and condemnations and whatever else and qualify everything that we say based upon the information that is presented to us and recognizing that there's a whole lot of information that has yet to be provided so that that puts a disclaimer on everything at the same time we still have to make decisions because people are being influenced even by that little information that is being presented to us and that translates to conditions on the streets even here um, from from like youngsters to old heads and otherwise so we do have to make conclusions we have to make working conclusions and presumptions the best as we can but still recognize that it's still only with a moderate amount of information and cats have well we, we do receive low-key channel communication uh, in, in a number of different ways but in terms of like having a sit down and, and, and discuss it most kinfolk as much as we understand um, as much as we can tell have yet to re recognize any further um, how I put this it seems difficult for many kinfolk to recognize the legitimacy within myself personally and within our our extending collective of kinfolk uh, even kinfolk have difficulty discerning who we are um, because that's the nature of who we are so Anyways, point is that the best thing is to just talk directly to kinfolk and, and hash this out, sit down, reason, be respectful, 
And additionally, uh, part of the challenge is that when we talk with kinfolk in the, the further collective of the ilk of, of um, our brother Dr. Umar Johnson, it's, this, it's the exact same thing, thorough to the face disrespect, uh, which we absorb for the sake of diplomacy and cooperation. But there's little hint or in suggestion or intention of like withholding that disrespect or dis or stopping that disrespect. It's a doubling down, unapologetic, without a pause disrespect. And at that point, it's like, okay, that that's fine. You you would do your thing, we do our thing. That's it. Uh, we share what we can, but at the same time, yo, we can only share so much because yo, this is what it is. So um, that's that's part of the challenge and. But just so those are some of the disclaimers. First, we have modest information, have yet to have direct communication officially, um, and that's optimal. But in lieu of that, um, we, 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 we work with what we got. Now, uh, all right. So again, I'll go back to like when I first start listening to some of what Brother Dr. Umar Johnson shares over six years ago. It's probably about six or seven years ago. Um, like very strong voice, intelligent, respect for that. Uh, speaks uh, a mindset and a, a um, uh, an honesty that is comparatively rare, uh, that is comparatively um, courageous, presumably. Um, in the black community because few other people are speaking in that way, have the, have the knowledge to speak about, have the knowledge about how things work, and that with that knowledge, speak about it very critically and openly. So respect for that. And, and talking about a lot of the problems in addition that people are not talking about even within the black community because a lot of black pe people who, again, a lot of black people who get knowledge, who go to school, who get education, who get connected, can't talk about the nasty because then they get dropped. And when they get dropped, there's no... There's no, there's very little um, recuperation because they already cut their, they, cu they cut the connects with the hood uh, in order to get connected. So when they get dropped from their connects, they get, it's, it's comparatively being stranded. And that's a very tenacious place to be in. Um, so that's why I folk don't talk about the, the nasties when they learn how it works and, and what the game is. So for Brethren, Dr. Umar Johnson to have certain knowledge in that respect and talk about it, again, that's something particularly um, in the past 40 years when there's been a, such, a, such a, uh, a vacuum, such an absence of black leadership, um, genuine, um, constructive, honest, disciplined black leadership in the black community in the United States in the past two generations at least since the civil rights movement, essentially since MLK and um, Malcolm X. So, uh, Black Panthers. Um, so respect for him doing that. Now at the same time, when I start hearing him talking about throwing mixed people under the bus, none of his teachers can marry or have it be an interracial marriage, all of that is just complete bullshit because he can't do that. He doesn't have, he, that's against the law. And we're not, we're not proponents of the law. The U.S. Constitution is bullshit. But for him to be so militant and saying that's going to be the policy, first of all, he's saying what will be. He's claiming to say what will be, what he, he, will, what he will do, this and the other. But it's, it's for show. It's, I mean, it's, it's against law, the U.S. law that he abides by. So it's, 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 it's propaganda that he's, that he's spewing just for the sake of like, rallying the kinfolk around him. Uh, and feeling for their better, better about oneself, but at the same time, throwing mixed people under the bus, not just interracial relationship, but the children who are adults, who are grandparents at this moment, who are children, youth, and additionally, struggling. Talking about black brethren, boys and youth, struggling. Mixed brethren are struggling too. Serious. But he steady throwing kinfolk under the bus, unapologetically. So that's when we're like, oh, yeah, okay, nah. That's it. And there's no common ground because you can't respect us. We're not going to pretend to be cool because you we, we all know what, where y'all heads at. So like y'all just want to bow down and do what you want to do. And that's it. So nah, 
you can't you can't even like enter into that kind of thing because you're like you don't want to you don't want to like build with people you don't respect because that's nothing you disrespect yourself for doing that so okay this is just no comment no common ground to work from all right fine that's it um but then keep going that's what we keep on hearing um so just just to break down some of some of the basics some of the some of the machinery around around uh brother and dr umar johnson now some can, can uh, accuse us of being uh conjecture this is these are scenarios of how this type of situation happens um so one there's a there's a there's a brain trust around brethren brethren dr umar johnson uh, a militant a black militant brain trust low-key um, some names might be prominent here and there but otherwise it's his support group that 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 helps him deal with things streetwise conventional wise and otherwise so that's that's like his that's his um what they call that that bottom drawer or whatever um um anyways that's that's his foundation that's his, that's his backup now what he does in his life in terms of getting a phd working his psychology joint or whatever counseling youth for a number of years that's him stacking up his credentials and preparing for the platform that he's at the moment and in that process again this is how a game works um kinfolk are, are identified in that process particularly if in, in, in studies um that um, and he, his is a special special kind of uh, of skill set because he has the he has academic credentials presumably don't know what school he graduated from or otherwise not 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 challenging that it's not a big thing uh necessarily to graduate from school it's not challenging but just don't know and and can't take anything 100 percent for granted either so anyways but just presuming that's accurate and that's not shade just just facts presuming that's accurate um the way that that w generally the way it tends to work is that you get shadow bosses in those situations Either somebody just sells out. I mean, this, we're talking about somebody who's black, somebody who's like in um, a disenfranchised community where they don't have backup from their own community in the high places to hire people directly. For example, if somebody's Jewish, they go to law school, they're working for a Jewish firm. They're working for Jewish lawyers and additionally within the Jewish community. So they're hired by Jewish kinfolk to help the Jewish community. Chinese, Chinese, same, same, same. In the black community, there, there's extremely hardly any black firms that are hiring black lawyers and most of the most of black practices and i'm speaking from the experience of lawyer but that goes for all the professionals anybody who's getting high degrees is is necessitates a high salary in in order to receive a high salary you got to work for people who have big pockets and there's not many people in the black community that have big pockets and those that do have big pockets are in other people's pockets and can only spend that money in certain ways don't have a lot of independence generally speaking there are some who are entrepreneurs and have further liberty than others but still not to the point of having black law firms and additionally like the top law firms of europeans or otherwise so in that process when somebody's getting those credentials they either have to work for another community ethnic wise and and basically sell out and be the token and and just be extremely marginalized and leveraged and just like be in a corner and shut up and take your paycheck and like it we're going to talk to you how we want to talk to you until we're done talking to you. That's it. Um, you can you can pop it off in the mouth in private with your own people. Don't let it get out uh, and don't let it get to clients or whatever else. And, and if we get a sniff of it, yo, bounce. That's it. So, yeah, you got money. You got bank and you can wear fancy clothes and have a nice car and everything else like that. But it's a slave, a high paid slave working for somebody else who does not respect, doesn't care. Um, and is just at the very at the very most just filling a quota um, um, mandated by the federal policy. That's one scenario. Another scenario is like working a, a, a civil servant job, government or whatever. And so that's a moderate version of what I just described. Then there's like working for the hood and just struggling, hardly making many, any money, writing grant after grant, and just playing goes through, going through that hoops and ladders. But at the same time. At the, it's doing probably what the most benefit that can be done with that education initially, which seems to be the route that uh, Brother Dr. Umar Johnson takes. Don't know all the details, but that seems to be the general, general um, track that he that he proceeds along. But even in that pro, even in that path, what happens 
generally speaking, is that the kinfolk, in the process of getting the education, when he's at the university graduate school or whatever, particularly a graduate school, starts to get shadow bosses. And those shadow bosses might just be one, two, or whatever. Low key, it might be a professor, it might be uh, a professional uh, in a nonprofit field or whatever else, even like a board member of something or else. It might be a philanthropist, it might be a benevolent retired business owner or whatever else. But they get a shadow boss or a few shadow bosses who are like their go to person within the, in the conventional society, in the hierarchy. Um, and they're like, they look out for that, for that person, for that, for the upcomer, up and coming, um, um, person who's not going to go the corporate route, who's not going to go the government route, who's going to be like the, the, the trustee, that's a slave term. The trustee is that, that, that slave, the African slave who basically is, is entrusted by the slave owner to, to, to keep all the other slaves in check. Um, and so it's not an overseer. The overseer would not be an African. The overseer was, was somebody of, of probably Irish or otherwise. Um, so it's, it's almost like the equivalent of an overseer, but it's an African. So, but they're a trustee. And even like they come from the hood, and initially the, the, the thuggish, ruggish, the better, because they have better, they have further uh, street credit. So, they, so the, the, the shadow bosses and, and, and working with their network or whatever um, can... Um, convince their their backers investors or whatever say no we got we got somebody we can trust they got credentials they got a network or whatever else and then that that trustee becomes the policy actor um, the policy pusher um, of the shadow boss and that shadow boss works for other entities or whatever and so the shadow boss basically just relays his message and it oftentimes is very subtle um because again the, the less evidence the better uh, but just like a hint there like we need we need somebody to talk about this thing right here and, and just like quiet this up a little bit um or whatever else so the person who's the up-and-comer uh the black professional up-and-comer um who's who's doing the best they can to, to like translate those gifts back to the to the community the black community um still is in somebody else's pocket the, the the systems the imp, the empire's pocket uh, through the guise of a shadow boss um, now the person who goes that route the up and comer the black professional who goes that route has further liberty about what they can say as long as they abide by the general s framework of the script that this that the shadow bosses want and, and the shadow boss might not it's not necessarily an exact script of like toting the line generally speaking it's like don't talk about this here over here sway the attention away from there and direct it towards there. It's basically things like that. And it's, it's training over a number of years and showing that they play the game and everything else like that. Um, but the point is, like the, the, the end all thing is, it basically, um, it, it, in, that, in that position, that black professional who works for the hood and with the shadow boss, um, they have that ability to talk about the problems in ways that others can't. And, and there's so many things to talk about in the society, so much bullshit to call out that people are not calling out, that when somebody does, they look authentic. Yo, nobody else is saying that, so this guy is the truth. But however, yes and no, because yes, they have further liberty to do that because they've been designated that and trusted to do so by the empire itself. Um, however, in, in just calling it out, still directing people not to the solution. But just to, to um, um, feudal methodologies that are just part of the system still, still part of the plantation and are not genuine solutions to get outside of those challenges. And that's where, where a lot of that bullshit is uh, because they know better, the brethren know better that that's not the solution. To speak, to speak so militant and then still be part of it and not call that out, not address it and try to defend it. And very few people can say anything back because they're all enveloped in it too, entrenched in it, citizenship. Social security number, all the bank accounts, paychecks, mortgage, Everything is based upon an individual's identity as a citizen. And to 
relinquish citizenship is relinquishing all of that. Where is the stability? Where is the security? Yeah, I know you're not coming up on me. I talk to these mice sometimes. Anyway, um, seriously, you know what? The mice like drums. Like that's when I see the mice the most because they like they stop they stop tripping, they start moving slow and like just like for some reason, all of a sudden I haven't seen them for weeks. And then I play the drum at night and all of a sudden like they just stop in the middle of the kitchen floor and just look at me, like yo. Like they forget where they at <laughs> uh, until I go and then they jump up and everything. That's another story. All right, back on track. Um, lead people into futility, distraction. How about that? Um, and away from the solution. So yes, speaking to the problems, speaking certain, uh, calling things out that nobody else is doing. Too tough. Speaking on it intelligently that few people who have the courage and will to talk about it have the knowledge to break it down like somebody who's educated in it. Um, but at the same time, directing people and being in militantly into futility, into just staying as slaves on the plantation. Oh, bump that man. And, and, and notice how a lot of the rhetoric um, is towards system rather than calling, well, I'm, I'm not going to get specific in that respect at the moment so that's part of it now at the same time you know they got they got to have backing um they got to like they got to show some 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 uh some kind of progress or whatever and so the shadow bosses make that happen uh, allow okay here's here's a listing uh for for a property or here's here's how we can do this and here's that and this here's this so that's part of, it's not just a one-way street. The shadow boss also helps the trustee to get certain things to have further credibility in the hood. Now, at the same time, one, the trustee, the, the, the black professional who's working for the hood, but also working for the shadow bosses, um, the trustee diverts people into futility, calls things out to get credibility, has education that few do, can talk about things in ways few can, but then directs people off course. Uh, very, very unique skill set. Um, not only that, um, because the person is speaking in a militant way, has the opportunity of no, getting intel about the movements and everything else like that, where the where the um, the unruly militants are, and 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 can feed that information very quietly. Some call that snitch or whatever, but that's that's part generally part of how the scenario is. I'm not calling Dr. Brother Umar a snitch per se. Don't have evidence explicitly about that, but just start discussing the general nature of the scenario um and it, and and to be honest i'm just going to be very emphatic i'm not calling dr brother dr umar johnson a snitch not saying that he's not either um and it's that's a very that's a very sensitive thing and it's a very it can be a very charged thing even just like suggesting that as a way of disparaging somebody so my i would i would uh, emphasize not to disparage and not to have any we don't have a lot of suspicion about him in that respect. Don't have much care in that respect either. Because uh, to us, there is there is no snitching. We are the law. Ain't no snitching to to pirates. It's all piracy. So there is no snitching in our estimation. So we're not we're not accusing, and it's not a big thing for us. Snitching is, we know it's a thing on the streets, but for us, it's not a thing because we are the law. We are authority. That's what sovereignty is. That's what righteousness is. So the, the, the plantation politics and gang, that's all bullshit. So there is no snitching for that. It's, a, it's all part of that slave mindset. So th that's not even, we're not, we don't care one way or the other. Uh, but we also, we're not trying to disparage. We're not trying to like prove our point by, by hinting about that, about, about, about Dr. Umar Johnson. So just let just to be further clear about that. But that is part of the scenario that when somebody is in that trustee position, they like militants come out the woodwork. Yo, yeah, we 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 on you, yeah, man. No, but we got to, and then like again, the the shadow bosses want to know about that. Who, well, who who was that? What were they saying? I mean, that's just that's how that's how game work. Um, so, uh, did, 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 now the other thing also that we observe that we do say about brother Dr. Omar Johnson is that uh, very often the shadow bosses provide certain uh, directives to the trustees about 
who to, who to address, what problems to address, whatever. And and for for the conventional hierarchy of the plantation, um, mixed people are a problem. Um, quote unquote, I'm not gonna say militant mixed people because it's difficult to say how many collectives there are. To be honest, there's a latent militancy within mixed people. It has yet to be properly organized uh, into like a movement or groups or whatever else to, to our knowledge per se, uh, as an intentional explicit methodology and, and, uh, and, and priority. Uh, there are some people who identify individually, personally as being militant, but that's kind of like in a kind of like a, um, uh, I don't want to say cliche, but a little bit of a um, trend kind of mentality rather than like a, a, a like a, a, a solid rooted um, intentionality and discipline. So, um, but that being said, yo, mixed people are huge numbers. And not only that, it's not just mixed people by mixed people selves. It's mixed people and then all the different types of ethnicities, families, friends around mixed people that strongly identify with the culture and the norm of multiculturalism. And additionally, it is a sleeping giant within American society. And, um, and not only a sleeping giant, but like the essence of what America claims to be. So it's a sleeping giant that's like a sleeping giant superhero. Um, just like, just waiting to like, just like, and it's, that's like, that's probably the biggest threat to the American hegemony at this moment is mixed people. Because when mixed people are mixed people genuinely, America is gone. The racism and genocide is gone when mixed people are mixed people. And that's bump China, bump Islam, bump Russia, bump LGBTQ, whatever else. The biggest, the biggest latent threat against American hegemony is mixed people. And the thing is, America is mixed people. Like, that's what America is. So it's just, it's, it's America is, is just, is, is, striving, how I put this, America is desperate not to be itself and going through tremendous lengths of preventing becoming itself. Becoming what it claims to be, becoming what it wants to be, becoming what it dreams to be, becoming what it promises to be, becoming what it contractually obligates itself to be. It is diligently, desperately toiling not to be itself and it's just it's just a, just a matter of time it's, it's eventually it's happening um so in the meanwhile that power structure that is that is extremely adverse towards that um has this very significant um motivation and fixation about suppressing mixed heritage and things that genuinely and substantively discuss, support, organize, cultivate mixed heritage, mixed experience, and additionally, um, where the mix, mixed first again, just look at the just look at the official statistics. Mixed heritage is what thirteen percent of the population. That's something something thirteen some some officially knowing it's on one hand easily double that easily double that most likely six seven times that depending on how we de define mixed heritage so at the officially officially by america the u.s's own admissions and in, 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 in proclamations if we say 13 percent of 300 million people 
That's somewhere near 40 million people. 40 million people, just in the United States. 40 million people. That's one of the largest nations in and of itself on, on this earth. 40 million people. Where are the institutions? Where is the, where is the, um, the civil rights organizations that advocate mixed heritage? Where are the legislative lobbyists? Where are the think tanks? Where are the universities? Where are the professional organizations? And further, for 40 million people. Where are the cultural societies? Where are the museums? Where are the magazines? Where are the newspapers? Where are the investment groups? Where are the law firms? Where, where are the accounting firms? Where, they are, where are the alumni association? We, we know there are student groups very sparsely supported and very significantly suppressed from existing on, on many campuses at Camp I. Still at, at my, one of my alma mater, not even recognized as a thing, not even offered uh, on, the, on the statistics, not even, not even recognized in the statistics still to this day, 20 years after the census has changed in the US officially. Hampton University, called out. Because why the population at Hampton University is easily over 50% mixed, if truth be told. So, where were we going with all that? 30 minutes into this journey, okay. Um, so point is that there's a severe amount of suppression of mixed people cultivating these institutions. And it ain't like it hasn't happened before, looking at Creole, looking at Metis Nation, and additionally, looking at what Hapas do within the past 20, 30 years. Now, when I'm talking about mixed, I'm talking about all mixed across the board. Um, Brethren, Dr. Umar Johnson wants to just talk about black mixed, um, but people don't have an understanding, many people don't have an understanding about the nature of being mixed and are trying to do these divide and conquers even between different types of being mixed, between Hapa and, and uh, Creole and, and Meti and, and Latino and otherwise, trying to like establish all these false borders between ethnicities and, and, and incentives and everything else like that and dispersion or otherwise. Um, and particularly along domestic lines too, the national nationalistic lines, um, it's just it's just a lot. It's a whole lot of work. It's a whole lot of work. Can folk are doing just to keep things stagnant. It don't float, anyways. So point here is that the hierarchy uh, that's that's uh, around the shadow bosses has a high incentive and highly motivated. Uh, of, of suppressing mixed people and it's a difficult it's a difficult skill set it's a difficult thing because when when the when the convention does it themselves then they just they just look so blatantly racist and 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 all that other stuff so they need kinfolk from other sets which is why the black trustee the militant black trustee the trusted black trustee professional uh, is is a is an increasingly uh, favorable um, mechanism for casting shade and doing the divide and conquer mentality and, and drawing lines and, 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 and spewing propaganda and hate and, and, and um, polarizing kinfolk um, from working together and otherwise. Uh, again, it's a classic divide and conquer. So uh, the black militant is, is, is in a position at least to cook up dust uh, and, and seemingly in, in, in a um, ongoing way for the past few years. Um, and that's what we observe. Uh, it's like um, Royce Gracie was the, was the, like the un undisputed ultimate fighting championship, undefeated uh, essentially in, in, in like years of competition. And all that being said, there was a, 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 um, um, a jiu-jitsu fighter in Japan, who wasn't the best fighter? I mean, he, he had like a decent record, or whatever. But he wasn't undefeated. I mean, he was he was a, a scrapper, or whatever. But he wasn't undefeated in Japan. However, he did have a very effective skill set in going against the Gracies. One of which was like jumping high up amongst the 
the, the, the floor uh, grappling uh, back on the ground kind of uh, stance that Gracie's uh, employed towards Ken. So this, he was called the hunter, uh, the Gracie hunter. Um, so basically he would jump up as they, they, they'd be on the ground like this trying to like battle. He would jump up so that he'd have that attack and then he jumped right on top of them. So they didn't have all those defenses that they trained for. And he had an effective technique, particularly against the Gracies, to do that. So in this particular instance of, of, of ethnic politics and, and divide and conquer, you have the black militant who has that skill set of denigrating mixed people across the board, unapologetically, militantly, rallying up other black kinfolk um, who have some type of conscientiousness and otherwise uh, to get on board in terms of throwing mixed people under the bus. And that helps the, 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 um, the convention, the plantation owners, uh, in, in keeping at bay that sleeping giant from organizing and becoming self-aware and, 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 and like saying, you know what, nah, bump y'all. We don't need that. What you talking about? Democracy, that means we got this. So that's, that's um, one of the roles of, of the black militant trustee uh, is throwing mixed people under the bus. Now, getting and, and having street backup and, and credit, whatever the black militant trust, um, getting the black trustee getting benefits from his shadow bosses through connections with the, um, the school and everything and, and getting that established. Uh, and then his black militant trust getting uh, cred on the street for, for staying true to the black cause and, and calling the truth out on the sellout, mixed people, uh, and this, that, and the other, and, and getting a sense of self by denigrating another group of people, crabs in a bucket. So um, that's the scenario. And um, peace, we love all brethren. We love all the brethren who have who, an interest of self-knowledge uh, and upliftment in addition. And that being said, we call out bullshit on that. Now, the thing about it when, when uh, just, just reading, listening just the brief clips that we hear just, just today, uh -huh. we hear Brethren Dr. Umar Johnson criticize Obama and criticize um, uh, Kamala Harris. We don't even talk about them. We don't even discuss U.S. politics. So, of course, we agree. Both of them sell out. So is Biden and Trump. All that. It's all, it's all plantation politics. So you can single out mixed people. Yes, it's genocide. Yes, the, the Eurocentric racist hierarchy is utilizing mixed heritage as a way of um, uh, being the, the, the further tolerable allowance uh, on the face, um, on the face of the propaganda in, in society, whatever else, and supplanting the, the uh, existence and the culture in the face of dark-skinned Africans. Yes, we agree, and that's bullshit. And who's, well, I'm not going to get into the blame game, but first recognize that mixed people aren't the ones who are masterminding that. Mi mixed people are not doing that. It's the Eurocentric, and we're not hating on Eurocentric kinfolk either, but just recognize if you're going to take fault with people, recognize, put fault where the, where, the act, where the decisions are being made and where it's orchestrated. Mixed people are being utilized as puppets, just like Brother Dr. Umar Johnson is being utilized as a puppet. And, and we call that out. We call it, we call it out. We call it out. That's what it is. Um, so Obama is a puppet. Kamala Harris is a puppet. And it's, it's not a puppet for mixed heritage people. Mixed heritage people are not putting, didn't, didn't back up Obama. We didn't empower Obama in terms of Harvard education, law firm, and additionally. That's all working for the same system that Brethren Dr. Umar Johnson and his crew is working for. Same thing. Same, same system that gives Brother Dr. Umar Johnson the title for the land where his, where his school is being established, presumably. And I don't get into that shade. We don't get into the shade about disparaging Brother Dr. Umar Johnson. We want him to have a school. We want him to educate black brethren and give them education about knowledge of self and further. We want that. We, we, we root for that for five years ago, from, from before even having anything. To this day, amidst, even amidst the shade, that's, yo, that's the nasty thing about being us. We can't hate because we, we got too many things to do in this life. So, all right, you hate us, fine. Be you as much as you can be because we, we know we trust in the most high God. 
Elohim, known by many names and beyond all names. We trust that when you know further about yourself and when you teach for others about themselves, they're going to hate less. And it's going to happen eventually. So that we, we support that. But at the same time, we're going to have to support it from a distance because we can't, we can't let that shade on ours. We can't let the shade on our sons and our daughters. Disrespecting our sons and daughters. And you expect others to respect yours. What the fuck? All right, let me, all right, see, all right, see, if I had sons and daughters, I wouldn't even be talking about this, so we'd just shut it off and bounce, anyways, but we're going to, we're trying to share some information here now, further, so, like, we're not even on the system, we're not even on the politics, so, you're the one talking about it, so why even talk about that, that's, that, I mean, you just, you're promoting it, you're, you're, you're promulgating it, the plantation politics, we are off of it. So you can you can single out mixed heritage certain mixed heritage kinfolk that are being utilized as puppets, and we agree with you. That don't mean all mixed people are on that. So, as I said before, you can you can find um, all different types of black black puppets. You can call them coons or give them distinguishing characteristics or terminologies away from which who you are. But that same disassociation <clears throat> from puppetry applies to mixed people too. Not all mixed people are on that. So don't throw all mixed people under the bus about that. Now the thing is, mixed people are significantly <clears throat> leveraged to be able to, to like clap back. And we see the don't Brethren's name is DJ Envy at that time years ago on the on the breakfast show. <clears throat> calling him out to his face and not caring where he goes to HBC. You, you disrespect your own things. Like you say, like, that brethren has credentials. Going to an HBC and then you say, well, that don't mean nothing. What the fuck? You disrespect, and then when you disrespect your own self about your claiming, naming your school the Frederick Douglass School and respect to the ancestor Frederick Ludd Douglass, but then when you speak disparagingly about him marrying a person of European descent because it doesn't match your politics and your militancy and your propaganda, you're disrespecting your own ancestors. That shows like where your head's at and, and where your inauthenticity and your Afrocentricity is. That off rip, because ain't no question disparaging your ancestors like that. Trying to make excuses and, 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 and retroactive rationalizations and whatever else to apologize for your own black militant platform and propaganda. <clears throat> shame on you. That's strong. I never said shame on anybody before that I can think of. That's corny, first of all. But serious, like when we talk about when you disrespect your answers, there's shame on you for that. And it shows where your mind's at in terms of authenticity. Disrespecting ancestors. We don't disrespect anybody's ancestors, let alone our ours. Our own, we we call things out. I might be hypocritical, but we call things out. But we do it with a certain amount of honesty, and it's pain. It's painful. But we don't do it to just match our own agenda, you know, our, our own earthly agenda. Because the pain we experience is is beyond that. So, all right, anyways. Um, and then just all right, going further on to the Afrocentric thing. Having this pro-black militant thing. Again, you should not, be a, should not be a citizen. There's no excuse for that. If you're going to be pro-black and to the point of throwing other Africans under the bus. Africans under the bus. Mixed Africans under the bus. That's how strong your, that's how strong your, your stance is and, and, authentic, and truth is. You should not be a U.S. citizen. No excuses, no pimp talk, no militant double bullshit talk. You should not be a U.S. citizen. If you're that hardcore and, and righteous, do not be a U.S. citizen. Do not have bank accounts. Do not have a U.S. dollar with George Washington's face on it, with Thomas Jefferson's face on it, with Andrew Jackson's face on it. Hardcore throwing Africans under the bus and holding on to that Eurocentric dollar. That's hypocritical bullshit.
voting, talking about voting, giving an opinion about candidates, giving recommendations about campaigns, and additionally, bullshit. That's that's the that's the shadow bosses telling you to rally people to get involved, and that's what this is. As, as, uh, I meant to say that before. That's what this whole thing is too. It's political season. Don't even care what candidate is elected. The machine just wants people to be engaged, to direct attention in this way, into this theater. You don't have to like the movie. Just go to the theater. Be in the theater. That's it. And so the militant, the so-called militant voices or whatever, saying things, provoking things to get people talking, excited, and then channeling that into the, the sheep going through the corrals as told. Slaughter. Um, and so when, when, when Brendan Uber, Dr. Umar Johnson talks about genocide and talks about these serious things and then is, is guiding people to stay on the plantation, that's hypocritical bullshit. And we could talk about, well, you know, it's tough to move and this and the other. You don't see. You don't see. You want your comforts. You want, you want to eat your cake, eat it all up, and still have it. That's not how the game, that's not how truth works. So either you you either you see the genocide and you get out of it. All right, so let's let's just talk about what the scenario is. If somebody is actually truly Afrocentric and truly a black militant, and you're not a US citizen, you're not living in the United States, and you're not leading and guiding and soliciting people to live in the United States. You are repatriating to Africa. Those are two basic fundamental things. If you're being true to the game about being Afrocentric, militant Afrocentric, you're not throwing other, other Africans under the bus. Unapologetically, militantly, vehemently, categorically. You're not doing that if you love the Africans so tough. Anything critical you say about Africans is tempered with love. Fatherly love. Am I doing this here? I'm, I speak the truth about support to this day. Am I scratching myself every time I say something? Perhaps. I'm not trying to pay attention. I'm trying to focus on here. You're not a U.S. citizen. You don't live in the U.S. You're not throwing Africans under the bus, even mix heritage Africans under the bus, when you love Africa, when you truly love Africa and the sons and daughters of Africa, you're not throwing anyone under the bus, particularly categorically. You can talk about behavior, but when you talk about behavior, put some spec on it. That spec means respect and also specificity, meaning not all of them are doing it talk about behavior and say yes mixed people are being used as puppets certain mixed people are being used as puppets not all are doing it and speak with respect recognizing that you're talking about the children of your ancestors when you go deep enough you see when you have that ancestors consciousness you speak with that ancestors respect about your relatives seen you heard that's what reveals the falsity that lack of respect the fact that we have to say that repeatedly two people can see this video it doesn't matter the heavens see it God sees it truth you don't live in the United States you don't you're not a US citizen you don't live in the United States you don't throw Africans under the bus and you talk about Africa stop talking about the US stop talking about US politics stop talking about all the nasty focus on Africa teach African language speak with the African language Tell African stories. 
not being a talking head, and additionally, about black politics and separation. Talk about history, solution. You have knowledge. You share it here and there. But the viral videos and everything is about hype and vitriol and divide and conquer. Invest in the songs and stories. So all of those things we do from this side. There's, I'm doing this at the moment, the talking head, whatever. Um, the hours of songs, hours of stories for years. And it's not easy. It's not the best, it's not the most exciting or whatever. We share it just as in terms of having some substance and, and give people the information so that those who have much nicer skills than I do about singing and storytelling can use those same songs and stories and build. We share what we got and we live by example. Uh, what about repatriation? We're mixed. The earth is our, is our homeland. I go back to my Earthland. Could try to go to Ghana. Ghana would not accept people who are not um, inoculated. Oh yeah, that's the other thing too. Um, just in the pocket. Don't what, what the situation is with the medicine thing. Don't know what you, what the whole um, what's it called? Don't even what's it called? What's it called? Uh, vaccinated. The whole vaccinated. Don't know if you're vaccinated or not. Don't know what your politics are on that. Comparatively less concerned about that, but. I don't know how much you speak about that. Maybe when it's convenient, maybe when it's permissible by the shadow bosses or otherwise. Um, but having a PhD being associated with academia and that being a platform of, of the initial uh, credentials and establishment of a platform uh, in which to be supported by the, the, the brain trust and then continually uh, with the conventional connects, um, that, that suggests a very proximate uh, positioning with um, with science uh, and the doctors. That's presumptuous. You can still have some amount of liberty to speak against that or maybe selectively or carefully. Again, sometimes can vote, sometimes the trustees are provided with some leeway in, ter in terms of being um, uh, speaking antagonistically towards some of convention to a point and then to, to guide people in a, in a path of um, futility. So um, don't listen enough uh, to the brethren's content or whatever to know specifically about what the, what the position is on those things. Uh, but again, um, we don't we, we see so much of not talking about the proactive identity and instead uh, just being very, very um, polarizing, being very provocative, disrespectful, um, speaking truth. There's so much bullshit. It's easy to talk about when somebody has the liberty to do so. Uh, and, and few have the ability, everybody all the talk shows, the radio shows, and additionally are in the pockets of the system. Brother Dr. Umar Johnson is in the pocket of the system. Um, I can be accused the same way, in certain ways. Uh, but I'm not wearing flashy clothes and, and getting a, a sen get, being that, that, that figurehead with, with the thing. And I'm, I'm going to call that out too, because we love the African clothing. We love the African clothing, and we support that. Who are we to support it or not? We're pieces of shit. We walk through God, we're no better or worse than anybody else. Who are we to, 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 to like or support or whatever else? We do support kinfolk wearing their traditional garb, whether it's Chinese, Indian, African, Native, whatever, European. We, we appreciate kinfolk wearing their traditional garb. Um, however, what we also see Brethren Dr. Umar Johnson wearing is like, and this is, not, this, is, this, is not a, this is not like a fashion criticism, this is actually substance. It, because it becomes a theater. It becomes like, it's a, it becomes a fashion show at that point because on one, on one show, in one program, he's wearing, he's dashikied up and everything and wearing medallions and, and all this, that, very Afrocentric. And then in another one, he's wearing like a very multicolored plaid sport jacket and like looking like Jay-Z, uh, let me not throw him that brethren uh, into the mix, uh, but just looking like some like trendy, buppy, wannabe situation like wait what's going on and we know africans dress with color and we know that and that can translate into a number of different things but how much is this like upliftment and how much of this is a fashion show it's one thing to wear african garb and even african garb from ghana can't take cloth and then wearing something from nigeria and then wearing something from um east africa and otherwise so all, all different types of genres of on the continent and so support, beautiful, represent. But then, like, wearing these other things that are, like, 
Eurocentric bourgeoisie, it becomes like, wait, what? what? Is this just a show? Is this like a fashion show? Um, and I mean, again, it's not whatever, whatever on what people wear, but it just, it just again, it speaks to like the, the suspect in terms of like the whole overall intentionality. And we're not trying to just like list gripes or whatever else. We're just outlining some things. So um, let's try to like focus on further any anything else relevant uh, priority at the moment. Um, I mean, just looking at at, at the methodology. Um, I was talking about me going to Ghana. wasn't allowed to go to Ghana two years when we had that when we were in that window of leaving this continent. We left this continent, and the intentionality is either go to Africa, Ghana, or to go to the place where my grandfather was born and raised, which is Denmark. I am mixed, unapologetically, beautifully, miraculously, hallelujah, mixed. So because of the increasingly proximate family relationship with Denmark, I go to Denmark. Um, and the actuality is that the United States, it's not even the United States, it's the world system flexes and bringing me back, de forcefully deported against my volition. So. It's on the world now. It's not even on the U.S. for me, for me being here and for us being here. Um, it's on the world. So we done repatriated. We left. So if Cass want to talk, call us out for that. And you brought us back, Mr. and Ms. United States. You brought us back. Um, because the United States presumably, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be too, too presumptuous and talk about like, like the politics or whatever. Because it, there's further things in this game than just what the United States wants to do or the, the conventional circles of the United States tr are trying to do. There's greater powers, there's a greater script in play. So, and that's part of the purpose of us being here at the moment is to actually help peace in this process of, of unraveling and, and, and uh, like societal change on this continent, um, national change on this continent. So we're here to optimize the peace and, and the order um, and uh, the well-being on this continent in this process. So that's our purpose for being here. And it's not our, it's not our want, it's not our doing specifically, exclusively, but that's what the world is, is, um, is deciding at this moment. So we did, but point being that whatever we suggest in terms of being Afrocentric, in terms of not being a US citizen, we're not US citizens. In terms of living in the United States, we left the United States. We've been forcefully brought back here. Uh, we attempted to go to Africa we, we were traveling without a passport. Um, we're traveling on like modest um, material means, um, monetary means. So we didn't, we, 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 and then meanwhile we see brethren, brethren Dr. Umar Johnson at the same time going to the islands and partying up and everything else. Yo, we live in, in state of emergency. We don't, we ain't got, we're not partying. We're not going to a black, black beach party in any place like that. We're not going to Afrochella. We're not going to, we're not doing anything. Yo, we in the state of emergency. For years we've been this, we live this trod. So when we see brethren militant throwing kinfolk under the bus and then partying it up, congratulations on your two, two wife wedding a few years ago, legitimately, no disrespect. But yo, we not, we, we ain't got that right now because we in, in a state of emergency for years. We live in it. It's not propaganda. It's not hype. So and then try to throw us under the bus. Us mixed heritage kid folk categorically disrespecting the union between our parents, mothers and fathers, disrespecting our children and grandchildren. Out of pocket. You are out of pocket. I'm trying to fuck with our crew. And there's few who can who can answer that call. And it's not Brother Dr. Umar Johnson himself that's doing that clap. So we 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 responding to all the brethren, all the brethren and sistren who are out of pocket, talking about mixed people categorically. We agree, mixed people significantly, not all, but significantly have been on the colorism, the brown paper bag. We it's a lot been a lot of shade. It's been a lot of shade on the other side too towards mixed people. So we have we have a lot of healing to do on all sides. 
but that that's not done through throwing anybody else under the bus particularly for selfish purposes and going on to the islands for beach parties that shit ain't what's happening learning African language. That's a telltale sign of authenticity rather than just hype and crabs in a barrel politics and positioning and gesticulation. When you're actually studying, going through the humble process of learning the language of your ancestors, we're doing that on this side. It just so happens to be what we are cultivating is a clan system, a matrilineal clan system, where we are affiliated with the clan affiliation of our mothers and mothers, 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 respecting our ancestors and learning the language of our mothers, 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 mother. So as men, when we marry and have children or marry two wives, we're, we're on the same boat with you on that slide. Marry two wives, three wives. Our children inherit the respective clan of our wives, respectively. So, for us as mixed people at the moment, it means learning the language of our mores, 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 more. Mothers, 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 mother. For me, that personally is Swedish. That's just what it is. And we love it. We love it. Without apology without excuses, for better and for worse, all of that. So that's what we learn. Now at the same time, we also learn Amharic because that's part of our heritage too, heritage as well. And Amharic is the foundation, the African-based uh, li linguistic system, writing system, that we recommend, they rec recommend for learning any African language. And, and on our list, it's a long list and it takes a while. It's patience, it's a lifelong project, it's lifelong learning. And we got to continue practice. Songs help us with that. Stories help us with that. Uh, Anansi, and additionally. So in addition to Amharic, just as a script, particularly in the language, uh, Twi and Igbo on, a, on my personal family side. So it's a gradual process, uh, acquiring materials, learning and, and practicing amidst dealing with kinfolk running up on lawns and crashing schoolhouse tents, sukkah tents into walls and such. So that's what we're dealing with. Black brethren doing that. So there are telltale signs. Be an African citizen. Be, a, be, a, be, a, be an African resident if you're going to be true. Um, love all Africans and respect all Africans, all children of Africa. And when children, any child of Africa is tripping, Call that out, but call out the behavior and not throw out the ancestors of that African child, any of the ancestors of the African child. When speaking about the ancestors of the African child, speak with respect for your own benefit. And the thing, again, about mixed people being a sleeping giant, like, it's not just respecting mixed people and, and, and promoting the well-being of mixed people isn't just for my benefit and it's not just for mixed people's benefit, it's for the world's benefit. Because when mixed people are in a state of malaise and volatility, that's hugely dangerous for the world, for the world civilization, because of the, the size and the nature of mixed people in terms of global geopolitics, military diplomacy, and otherwise. Stability, a knowledge of self, within the mixed community, within mixed heritage people, optimizes the well-being of people within each community, because that's the nature of mixed people, the relationship. So those are some of the basic things. Be an African citizen, live in Africa, love African kinfolk, be respectful of African kinfolk's ancestry and heritage, speak African and, and learn and teach African stories and songs, uh, and then we can talk further in terms of eating African food 
and learning African dance and practicing African economics. Because when you love yourself proficiently, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't gotta hate nobody. Um, so anything short of that and being a black militant and, and professing to, to know and do better than others uh, and, and tell others, um, accuse others of being less than and betrayers and everything else like that, all of that is bullshit because um, you abstain from doing what you pretend or claim to do in terms of being a black militant, speaking the English language, the imperialist language, using American dollars, bank accounts, uh, holding on to U.S. citizenship, classist, racist, and genocidal against yourself. Um, too much falsehood. So we're starting to rub the eyes. It's been over an hour. Um, it's beneficial to, to, to rejuvenate, maybe get some liquidation, <laughs> water, um, and wrap this up. So um, that's some of the challenge. Uh, and again, mixed people are struggling at this moment uh, because there are sellouts. That's one of the things we're dealing with right now. Even mixed heritage groups, what we're finding, like even those who are starting to do vlogs and and, and podcasts, and even write books, m very many the the norm within mixed heritage groups that and activist groups, the vast majority are sellouts, are assimilated within a, a comparatively Eurocentric or a homogenous mainstream um, and are finding a lane to fit in because they're not accepted as normal and equal uh, within the homogenous group uh, and so are, are finding this ability to um, to utilize the, the large demographic demographic of mixed people in order to establish niche um, uh, ventures um, and to get backing from convention because uh, it, these niche ventures um, guide mixed people into buying into the racist, classist, genocidal um, systems within that homogenous collective. So that's what mixed people are doing. Mixed people are selling themselves out, selling, selling ourselves out in order to make money um, and lead people into becoming slaves, becoming cultural slaves and even economic slaves, political slaves to homogenous um, imperialism. Uh, and in doing that, when mixed people, including myself, call that out uh, and, and speak in an honest way um, that, it, that refuses enslavement, then mixed people such as myself are accused of being crazy, um, a wild cannon, um, and a lot of shade, a lot of vitriol, a lot of stigmatization. Um, disassociation is solicited from the conventional hierarchies onto mixed leaders and groups to disassociate with the militant mixed people. Um, otherwise, that would look poorly in, in, in disparaging on the prospects of cooperation and ascension in the assimilation for, for the sellout mixed people. So we know very well the phenomenon of mixed sell outedness and assimilation and we disagree with that too we are in the thick of that and we're actually we have to compete well lightweight compete because again just like brother umar johnson is being utilized by the shadow bosses of convention he's in the pocket of the kinfolk who issue out land titles and money and um uh, bank accounts and additionally same thing with mixed heritage pin kinfolk who are activists and additionally they're in the pockets of convention somehow some way um and uh, we get it. We get it from the black militants. That type of hatred, 
and then we get it from our own mixed people uh, calling us all types of whatever. I said, we, we done dropped the head wrap now, so we know we're getting fatigued now. Um, so, now I was falling asleep just a second ago. This is where things are at the moment. Uh, and then our youth, and, and oh, that's just okay. We get it from we get it from the um, we get it from the from the Mac militants call us that out. <clears throat> any any group, uh, is, it calls us less than. I always have to prove ourselves and always accused of being sellouts and traitors and betrayers and everything else like that. So the black militants is just one example of that. Uh, every other ethnic group, every other religious group, is basically doing the same thing. Hardliners, uh, just just all types of disrespect towards us, towards our. Uh, dismissive towards our, our parentage and additionally we get that across the board it's not just with black folk um, and so that's one of what that's one of the struggles um, and that's real um, it, it translates into our relationship with parents translates to a relationship with family um, and, and everything else like that so we those, these are things we're dealing with um, that a lot of black folk don't have to deal with um, and so it's not a matter of better being better worse or, or um, being in a further favored position or whatever. Yo, we deal with things. And we, we don't need additional shade from cats um, talking out their mouth, the side of their neck. Ignorance. Um, so we get that from the black militants, but then we also get it from other mixed people who are selling themselves out, selling other mixed people out in order to be the favored one, the trustees amongst mixed people. Um, and the the imperialists have yet to find a way of doing that um, because it's an, it's it's um, the premise of that type of favoritism is 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 extre it's it's very unfounded and, and and it's very immediate in terms of unraveling itself and so it's actually just part of the process of the dis dissolution of the republic order the world republic. Um, which is also feeding the the university degrees and academia and everything, Greco-Roman civilization. So um, we get we get the shade from black militants. We get the shade from um, uh, mi sellout mixed sellouts. Um, then we get we we're now we're getting it from LGBTQ that is trying to assert itself as the favored minority, the gatekeepers of, of classism between the upper class and the underclass, and basically trying to put all people of different ethnicities in the underclass and be like the, the gatekeepers uh, to only allow uh, gay, LGBTQ, um, uh, ethnic kin, kinfolk into the middle class. Uh, and so that includes mixed people and, and trying to like equate being mixed with being LGBTQ. And every every conference, oh, I don't say every conference, but like the prominent conferences that are getting money and funding and additionally are being infused with just this propaganda of LGBTQ, where it becomes like an LGBTQ conference. And oh, by the way, we'll talk about mixed stuff, stuff too. Literally aligning it with, with uh, LGBTQ events and additionally, And then calling it family friendly. So we get it from a lot of different sides, and, and, and we, we don't need all that. So, uh, and the other thing also is that, as I mentioned before, the purpose of this is um, um, kicking up dust, um, causing up uproar, just getting people riled up uh, to be further participatory in the theater of the plantation. Um, because the further people are active in the theater of the plantation, the further people are responsible for the atrocities that are being committed by the imperialism, by the imperial plantation. Um, and the further intentionality of kicking up dust is for us to react and, 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 and get a little bit of motive and get a little bit charged and frustrated and impatience and then say stupid stuff in, in return. And not just stupid stuff about Red and Dr. Umar Johnson and the brain trust around him, but then say stupid stuff about black people. Insult black people so that it becomes, again, that divide and conquer thing. And even then, when we, we ain't got no hate or shade or whatever, we say, we say something out of pocket. And now it's not just a matter of uh, going at uh, uh, 
are getting charged from Dr. Umar Johnson, President Dr. Umar Johnson, and, and the black um, militant branches around him. But now it's all black folk. They say, like, wait, hold up, Peter, or uh, y'all, Peter and y'all. Why you got to talk about black people? Why you got to be like that? Like, you talking about Brother Dr. Umar Johnson, but, like, wait, you talking about him talking about, you talking about him talking about Lula. You criticize him for categor categorically dismissing and, and, and um, devaluing mixed people, but then you're speaking categorically about black people. So we have to be very mindful about our response because that's the intention, uh, to cause that, that those rifts, to, call, to cause those rifts within the relationships, within the solidarity, uh, and it, it's 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 tedious because when we get in these vacuums of just these screens, um, we get we get in these tunnels, uh, so that when we go into the streets, and we just see black folk, or we just see mixed folk or whatever, we start to to like think some type of way, and it's very easy to just take out these screen aggressions out on the streets, even just by looking at people or or, or trying to interpret the way people are looking at us. Which is why we say hallelujah, alhamdulillah, and baruch Hashem, because we cultivate these pieces. We love everybody genuinely, and e even amidst the frustration, and additionally, and we have to be very careful of how we let our frustrations affect our foundational relationships. So even when we just like passing by people for the first time on the streets, um, that's foundational relationship. We already have a, a cultivated discipline of saying peace and being genuine as we can be, even when we're frustrated. And, and even if we're not trying to like be like that for the moment, yo, it that's how we are. And hallelujah, because when we are that way, we see people respond. Black kinfolk respond with the same love that we always experience through our life. And that's the further affirmation of a deeper truth, a deeper love, a deeper solidarity, a deeper understanding, a deeper forgiveness, a deeper cooperation than the shade and the gaslighting beyond the shadow bosses and whatever else so um in the meanwhile like i said before we do our best to keep a distance from the dust kicking and uh we we provide our responses on a need a need basis as needed basis um And when we do, we try to keep it as honest and specific as possible, not throwing anybody, not anybody under the bus uh, and, and limiting our criticisms to the actors rather than just an entire category of people. Now, that being said, what we do get frustrated with the, with the black community as a general thing is the absence of leadership and voices um, to counterbalance what Brother and Dr. Umar Johnson and, and the brain trust around him are articulating. Because he's not alone in, in articulating these criticisms about mixed people. He might be like a mo one of the most prominent, but he's not alone. And we see, even within Rastafari, which is very frustrating, the the colorism, uh, the, the antagonism towards mixed people, calling a calling mixed people derogatory. And the thing is, yo, it's, oh man, it's like, this is, this is like the worst. I don't want to say the worst, but it's it's tenacious, because we we will be vibing and we see we see brethren on stage and and doing their doing everything else like that, and talking truth and 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 uh, Jah Rastafari, uh, the teachings of His Majesty, and additionally, and then in the freestyle, then just say something about picnic, and it's like hold up, what? Like that, like we let our guard down, we we we're, we're listening to to the positive vibration. And trusting in the brethren and sisters to walk righteous paths, righteous path, and then all of a sudden, we hear defamation against our ancestors, picnic, disrespect towards our grandparents, disrespect towards our great grandparents, right there when in, when we vulnerable uh, to building with brethren in trust and respect. And, and when brethren say it, smile unapologetically. Like, yeah, we got them. We got them. Yeah, they thought they were with us. Nah, y'all not us. Y'all not like us. Wow, Rastafari? See. Mm. 
So we can do better, y'all. All of us, we can do better. Um, I think that's much what I have to share for the moment. There's further things, but I think that's we at this for an hour and a half now. So, um, anything else? I mean, oh, so that's one of the things we get frustrated with black folk is just like. On one hand, we don't see leaders, prominent leaders or whatever, even like YouTube leaders per se, speaking as strongly to counterbalance what Dr. Brother Umar Johnson says. And it's not it's not the priority for black leaders to do so or whatever, but still, there being some type of credible um, black militant voice that says we don't we don't got to hate on it. Um, The black militants scene and, and collective seems to have yet to cultivate a a necessary discipline of diplomacy to be able to to establish middle ground with different groups and negotiate with different groups, whether that's Asia, East Asia, South Asia, the Middle East, or otherwise. That is the mark of a genuine community, a, a genuine liberated sovereign community. To, to be able to sit at the table with any side and talk about treaty, talk about negotiation, contracts, joint ventures, and additionally. It's the, it's the spewing of slaves that, yet, that shout hatred towards any categorical group and pretending like they don't actually have to deal with that group when their own technology comes from those other nations and additionally. That's the mentality of that slave. The slave doesn't want to take responsibility for the one a slave's actions or a slave's words or even a slave's thoughts. Just wants to vent and get it out. Um, perhaps not so too dissimilar from what I'm doing at the moment. Um, but the point is the slave shirks responsibility. And it's a liberty. It's a it's a youth it's a euphoria. First of all, let me introduce you, seduce you into a frame of mind that's easy to get used to. They got the cool. In the bay. So, uh, uh, let's wrap this up. <laughs> Hmm. I'm thinking about everything we had to do today and everything we had to do this evening and everything that didn't get done because we're responding to this. Oh, so, all right, okay. Um, so the point, of, the point of the propaganda right now, the kicking up dust, is to get, get people riled up and, and talk about this. So, again, what, what, our, what, our, mental, what our intentionality is is to lay low, to be, keep distance. Um, we've reached out to groups in the past uh, few weeks, particularly uh, for dip diplomacy purposes. Um, we're honing back into our spiritual discipline in the home front, continuing to focus on marriage and, 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 and um, reach out in that respect. But otherwise, um, circumstances are on a transactional basis only. So we're not out there um, to, su to, to support the causes of others at this point, like we are in the past. Um, we invite kinfolk to consider the, 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 the benefits of letting go of citizenship and ownership and practicing the discipline, particularly as Pontesilas, peace, sharing, chastity, honesty, sobriety. Peace, sharing, chastity, honesty, and sobriety. Um, and, and build with us along those lines. Otherwise, we got to focus on that and uh, strengthen the home front uh, from these types of attacks and hostilities, uh, even simply just from the angels and from the angels and the demons. Um, and have further availability to study the teachings of His Majesty and the rest of our teachers, holy teachers of this world and this earth. Um, and with that, we give all thanks and praise to the Most High Elohim and blessed love, peace, and rise to fly.